Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So let's say our opening prayer together. Be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your saving power. Speak in us, wisdom of God. Bring strength, healing, and peace. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. And we're going to worship together. Um, I'm going to ask the band. Um, when I heard them a couple of weeks ago, um, I hadn't realised they were new to this. And they're doing such a brilliant job. I mean, you'd think they've been together for ages. And uh, I'm so grateful to them to lead us in worship this morning. Thank you. Wonderful. So uh, if you're willing and able, please uh, stand. Uh, and we're going to start by uh, singing a song called Raise a Hallelujah. So regardless of your weeks, whatever you're coming to church with, uh, just raise your praises to the Lord.
I don't know about you, but I think sometimes um, I can come to church and it takes me a few songs to kind of really sink into kind of who we're worshipping. Uh, we are worshipping a loving God who is here to protect us, here to love us, and we're here to praise him for all that he's done for us. Um, and sometimes I, I need reminding that God is uh, our cornerstone, the, the one that holds everything else in place. Uh, so that's what we're going to sing now. We're going to sing uh, Cornerstone and just worship God for how steady he is in our lives. Our Lord of all. We thank you that you are the cornerstone and Lord help us to really know that in our heart of hearts. Amen. Amen. It's good to remind ourselves isn't it that he is Lord. I don't know what storms you've been going through this week but to remind ourselves that the Lord is the Lord in the midst of those storms 
is really encouraging, isn't it? I'm going to ask Reuben to come up um, and pray for the children. I think the children are going to go out and do exciting things. Hi, Dora. <laughs> Good morning. Lovely to see your smiling faces. Um, I'm Reuben. I'm the youth, children and schools worker um, here at St. Mark's and it's very exciting to be here. Um, so our children are about to go out to their group. So if you are uh, three to 11, you're very welcome to come and join me um, upstairs in our group fireworks. And we're gonna be uh, looking at God's big story, uh, which the whole Bible, um, but today just Moses. <laughs> so yeah, it'd be great to have you. It's going to be exciting. Um, let's pray for our children as they go out to our groups. So Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, so much uh, that we can meet here to worship you. Thank you that we can come together as your family. And we just pray for all the children you've placed into our care and um, that they would encounter you today and come away knowing you uh, that much more deeply. Amen. So uh, children, if you'd like to follow if you'd like to follow me with a parent or guardian out the side door and up the stairs, I will get you signed in. Thanks. Lovely. And we hope they have a wonderful time of learning about God and growing in their own faith as well. We're coming to um, a time of confession now. It's good to praise and worship God and remind ourselves of who he is, Lord of Lords. But we know that during the week that often we have forgotten that and perhaps not behaved or thought in ways that honour the Lord. So let's just have a time of silence and then we'll say the confession together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And thank you, Jesus, that when we truly repent, you are gracious to forgive us. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's we'll say the collect. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite Liz to come up. She's going to... Uh, read Psalm 91 for us. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. 
You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you, you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Our second reading is taken from the first book of Timothy, chapter 6, verses 6 to 19. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you, were made your, when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and the only ruler, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honour and might for ever. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father God, I pray that um, you would use the words I speak, that, um, Lord, you would laid seeds in our hearts that you would encourage us and you would just challenge us to live closer to you. Amen. So I'm going to be focusing on um, Psalm 91 this morning. And uh, I don't know about you, but Psalms are my go-to when I'm struggling, um, particularly if I'm having a really hard time and I don't quite know how to pray. I go to the Psalms because the Psalms are so honest, aren't they? They are 
sometimes full of anger, um, raw anger sometimes. Some of the Psalms you read, um, you think, oh my goodness, this is in Scripture. This is in the Lord's Word. Some of them are just full of praise. Some of them are full of lament. Um, but they are wonderful that they've been included in the scriptures because I think God wants to remind us that we can be who we are with him. After all, he sees our hearts anyway. We can't hide if we're feeling angry and disappointed with God. We can't hide if we're grieving from God. He knows what's going on in our hearts. So that's why I particularly love the psalm. And this psalm is a real comfort, isn't it? It's a reminder to us that um, God will presence himself with us, that he will bring his protection. It's a really um, reassuring psalm. But I want to look at it at both its reassurance, but the realism of what that means in our day-to-day -day lives. What does it mean to know God's protection in my life and in your lives? It begins like this. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Now, many of you, if you've read um, the Psalms, will know that a lot of the verses will repeat themselves. They just use different words. It's almost like a way of um, making it more concrete, um, of emphasizing it. So live and abide, essentially the same thing. Now, do you count yourself as someone who lives in the shelter of the Most High? Do you count yourself as someone who abides in the shadow of the Almighty? And what does that look like day to day? Are you someone who perhaps when life gets a bit tough, okay, well then I'll turn to God, then I'll pray. Or, you know, sometimes you think, well, it's quite nice to turn up for church. I'll go to church today. Is that living and abiding in him? If you think about those people that you live with, okay, if you live on your own, think about your family that you grew up with. They know you intimately, don't they? They know your day-to-day -day life. They know when you're feeling a bit irritable. They know everything about you. And that's what abiding means. It means living day to day, minute by minute, in God's presence. Jesus tells us that those who abide in him will bear much fruit. And actually, if we're not abiding in him, apart from him, we can do nothing. So that abiding and living in God needs to be a habitual and constant choice day by day. That we make that daily decision to depend on God, to listen to God. And it's a huge benefit, isn't it? And in verse 2, this is one of the benefits of living and abiding in God. Verse 2 says this, They will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Unless you are getting to know God on a daily basis, unless you are abiding in him, how can you trust him? How can you trust someone you barely know? So we need to make sure that we are building and developing a relationship with God so that we can truly say that we trust in God. When those tough time, times come, and they will, and they probably have for most of us, we know that we have that refuge and fortress in God. Now it goes on, the psalmist. Now we don't know who the psalmist is, by the way. Um, some people think it might be David. Some people think it's Moses. Nobody's quite sure who wrote this particular psalm. But obviously someone who knew God intimately. And he says this in verse 3. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler 
and from the deadly pestilence. Now, a fowler's snare, if you're not sure what that is, it's a trap for birds. So, traditionally, um, they would try and trap birds for food, and they would put sort of little treats in the netting um, to tempt the birds in, and then they would be trapped in the net. I wonder if that reminds you about anything. Trapping, tempting, it immediately reminded me of Satan. And this, I feel, is a promise that God is going to protect us from the traps and temptations of Satan if we keep close to him and walk with him. Now, it doesn't mean that we're never, ever going to be tempted. I think sometimes we make the mistake that the temptation is sin. Temptation itself is not sin. It's going to come up every day. Yeah? When I see some chocolate in the fridge, and I know I've eaten a lot of it, I can see temptation. Okay? But it's not a sin. It's not even a sin if I eat it, really. But uh, it might be if uh, my health's not so great. But there's going to be temptations. But God says that he's going to give us the strength to resist them. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 reminds us of this. It says, God is faithful and he won't let you be tested or tempted, both the same word in the Greek, beyond your strength. But with the testing or tempting, he will provide a way out so that you are able to endure it. So God is going to protect us, not from the temptation, but he's going to keep us strong so that we can resist that trap. But it also says that he's going to deliver us from the deadly pestilence. Now, during um, the COVID pandemic, I saw that verse used a lot. It was used by various Christian bodies as a way of saying, God's going to protect you. If you pray to him, you know, you're not going to get COVID. I genuinely saw that on social media. I wonder if you believe that. Do you take that literally? Never going to get sick. If you trust in God. Well, my testimony, my experience is that that is not the case. So, are we not going to take scripture at face value? I think there's something in this that we need to take in context. At this moment, I have several dear Christian friends who are undergoing some really tough things in their life. They're undergoing chemotherapy for cancer. And I myself went through 16 years of living with chronic pain. Did we not trust God enough? Was that the problem? Actually, I think context is everything with scripture. Never ever take a verse out of scripture and use it in isolation. It is the path to deception and false teaching. So we're going to keep on reading, and I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to leave you pondering that question. It says this, He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. Again, pinions, wings, same thing, just a repetition here. And it's that wonderful image, isn't it, of God as this huge, strong eagle protecting her chicks. And I always think that's such a wonderful reminder of God's love for us and his care and concern for us in our weakness. His faithfulness, it goes on to say, is a shield and a buckler. Again, shield, buckler, same thing. And here is God. We've got God as the eagle. And now God as our warrior king, protecting us in battle. 
It goes on, you will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in the darkness. We're back to pestilence again. Or the destruction that wastes at noon. Does it say that God takes all these things away? Not necessarily. What God does in his grace and mercy and love for us is that he gives us the strength to face them and the knowledge that he is there with us. That is my experience. That was my experience when I went through 16 years of being in pain daily, knowing that yet God was with me. So although the psalmist speaks throughout this psalm of protection from harm, He's also being realistic enough to know that God does not always take us out of those difficult situations. What he does do is he gives us the strength and the peace to deal with them. And he promises always to be with us. I wonder if you know what the most common used phrase by God is in scripture. I wonder if anybody knows what that might be. Yeah, well done. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. Now, apparently, I haven't checked this out, but someone has told me that it's said 365 times in Scripture. So one for every day of the year. Do not fear. You'll have to check that out. I'm not sure that that's the case, but it's certainly a lot when you look through Scripture. And he then goes on to say why we shouldn't fear. Not because we're not going to face difficulties in our lives. Not because we're not sometimes going to be faced with illness. But he says this, for I am with you. For I am with you. Now that is a comfort and it sustains us. Now for me... God did eventually heal me. It was quite a miraculous healing, and I can tell you about it over coffee afterwards if you want to know a bit more. And that was amazing. And I'm also praying for my friends who are going through really awful stuff at the moment. I am praying for God's healing. And we know that God heals. I know from experience that God heals. But I also know that sometimes he doesn't. And for me, my prayer for them is not just for God's healing, but they will know God with them. They will know God's strength and peace. Verse 15 picks up on that. When they call me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honour them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. God promises to be with us in our trouble. And sometimes he rescues us out of that trouble. But it may be that we're going to have to wait for that full salvation until we meet our Father in heaven until the new kingdom comes into its own. But he promises throughout our lives to be with us. I'm just going to read a very short um, poem, and then I'm just going to pray for us. So it's a poem from, um, if you've not come across this book, it's a really helpful book. <laughs> it says what it, it sort of does what it says on the tin how to pray um, it, it sort of chapters about you know how to pray when you're not feeling like praying and how to pray at the end of the day and it's a really lovely book that you can kind of dip into and I often dip into it um, if I want to think of different ways to pray um, I'm very easily bored I'm afraid so sometimes I have to think of different ways to pray this poem just, just uh, touched my heart uh, when I was preparing this. God is love, and he enfoldeth all the world in one embrace. 
With unfailing grasp, he holdeth every child of every race. And when human hearts are breaking under sorrow's iron rod, then they find that self-same aching deep within the heart of God. God aches for us in our pain and trouble. God knows what it is like to suffer. Jesus suffered unimaginable pain and isolation from his father. He knows we have a father, we have a God who knows what it is like. And my prayer is for all of us today, that we are reminded that God is with us. Whatever we're going through, wherever we go, whatever we do, God is with us and he loves us. I thought we'd just have a time of quiet just to um, ask God to just instill in our hearts anything that he particularly wants to speak to us about. Um, I hope we'll have a time later on for prayers um, during communion. Um, you can go and um, be prayed for if there's something that's really touched you and you just feel I really need um, God to do something in my heart. If you're feeling far from God and actually you're not feeling God is with you, then, you know, do ask for prayer for that. Lord, I just thank you that you want us to know that you are with us, that you love us, that you ache for us. I pray that no one will go away this morning not knowing that you love them. Pour out your love in our hearts, Lord. Pour out your spirit upon us. Amen. So we're going to go on to um, affirm our faith. And uh, it's a good time to do it. If you're able um, and can stand, um, please do, um, because it's a good reminder to us of what we believe as people of faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to ask Derek to come and lead us in our prayers. Let's pray. In our world today, Lord, there are so many storms, so many things we could be afraid of and worry about. So, Lord, we thank you for what George has shared about not fearing because you are with us. We think of our wider world and then a bit closer to home and then here at St Mark's as we as we pray especially Lord in in the wider world we we can't escape the awful awful pain that's uh, going on in the Russia attack on the Ukraine and um, Lord we 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 ask for peace we pray for peace we pray for sanity we pray for the safety of the world, that it won't escalate into a completely uh, irrational and uh, devastating wider conflict. And we pray for the combatants on both sides and the conscripts who are being dragged into the conflict from their lives in Russia, largely against their will. And we, Lord, we pray for lives to be saved and for peace to be negotiated and agreed. 
and then more generally, Lord, we think about some of the other things happening in the world to do with religious freedoms. Lord, we, we thank you that we're in a country that does have religious freedom. We pray for other countries where they have a, oppressive regimes and we, and we ask for, for the freedom for people to express themselves. But Lord, we recognise that um, that freedom isn't the answer to everything with what's happened in, in Leicester. And Lord, we pray that for all of us who have our religious freedom that we will uh, have the ability to be gracious and to avoid conflict and to find the common ground and to discover truly who you are. We pray for our nation at this time of transition in all sorts of ways, a new king, a new prime minister and a new cabinet and new policies which are controversial and another cause probably for worry and concern. Lord, we pray in, in everything that your will will overrule, that your will be, will be done and that all of our leaders will look to you and have a sense of the importance of, of the, and the privilege of what you have given them in terms of their positions and that they will seek your will. And here at St Mark's, Lord, Lord we, we pray about our, our proposed move to new premises in Shirley Road and we thank you for getting us this far. There's a way to go, Lord. And we pray again, Lord, your will be done. Your will be done, whether it's not to go ahead or whether it is to go ahead. Lord, you've been opening the doors for us, it seems. But we bring this to you, Father. We ask you to lead us and to guide us. Lord, also, we just want to pray very much for the children who are, who are upstairs right now as they think about Moses and the big story of the Bible, Lord, we pray for them that as they hear the story of how you have led humanity o over the ages, that they will get to understand who you are and to follow you. And now, Father, we pray for ourselves in a, in a moment of, of quietness. We bring our own needs to you, our own concerns, and we know that you are with us Let's just pray quietly for a moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Derek. We're coming to a time of communion now. Um, and so we're going to share um, the peace. We've been talking about how God is with us and it's God that gives us his peace, that peace beyond understanding. Um, but Jesus also told us that we can share that peace with one another. So that's why we do that together. Um, so... Let's do that. You, if you're more comfortable to do that at a distance, that's absolutely fine. If you're happy, just indicate to other people if you're happy. Um, no, I'm putting that in the wrong place. If you're happy to um, shake hands, then that's great. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let's offer one another the sign of the peace. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. 
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may to be to, for us the body and blood of your Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the wine, and again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Christ did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes. In glory. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against you. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave to you and the blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So we welcome anyone who has been baptised and who knows and loves Jesus to come and receive communion this morning. If you want to just receive a blessing, that's fine. Just show me that by keeping your hands by your side and um, I will happily pray for you. Um, and if you need gluten-free bread, just let us know that. Um, and if you want to receive prayer, um, please do make your way to the side hall for prayer as well. So we pray this prayer, thanking God for feeding us and um, giving us his son. Holy and blessed God, you have fed us with the body and blood of your son and filled us with the Holy Spirit. May we honour you not only with our lips, but in lives dedicated to your service of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to spend some time in sung worship, praising God for being with us. So, Becca and the band, if you can come up, that would be wonderful. We're going to sing Everlasting God. 
just a reminder, do go for prayer if uh, anything that you would like uh, to have prayer for, uh, if something uh, that you'd like to do, uh, please do pray. Um, I know that there's lots of things that uh, came up uh, that I that struck me through uh, George's talk um, and people that I have perhaps given up on praying for because I think, will God take them out of that situation? I don't know. But actually, God is with them through that. So uh, maybe there's people that you want to have on. prayer for that are on your mind or for yourselves. Um, God is with us and he's everlasting always. Um, and he is strong and mighty to save. So uh, if you're willing and able, get up on your feet uh, and we will praise our everlasting God. thank you that you are everlasting Lord that we can rejoice in the fact that we can praise you through whatever we're going through um, and just maybe take this moment now to just lift your voice out loud or in your in your minds just what are you, what do you want to praise God for at this moment maybe you can't think of anything because of how things are at the moment but he is with you praise him for the fact that he is still with you and he is loving you through this and he's loving you right now. He is everlasting, never ending, gone before us. Thank you, God.
we do choose to say, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Whether we're in the midst of a storm or in the midst of a time of blessing, we say, blessed be your name. Amen. I thought it'd be nice um, if you'd like to sit for a minute um, if we had a time of just um, sharing um, anything that maybe this week um, we can, we've seen God with us. Um, I'm just going to share one thing that happened. Um, many of you will know that I'm the chaplain at St Mark's School and uh, I've begun to lead um, the um, collective worship both for the whole school but also in the classes so I go into the classes and we lead a time of worship and uh, I was in one class um, this week and uh, we were just reflecting on um, the Queen's death but also on her faith and we talked about how yes it's sad that she's died but she had that hope that her life would go on because she knew that she had eternal life and we talked a little bit about what that looked like and then we just um, we uh, shared Psalm 23 which was apparently one of the Queen's favourites and we did that in sung um, form and uh, the day after I had an email from one of the members of staff who's a Muslim and she said how she had been moved to tears and that God had really touched her um, through that worship and could I share um, the song with her could I share Psalm 23 with her because she was so moved by it and she said that that felt like the God I worship um, which is what she said so for me that was a huge encouragement to see God at work and on the move um, at St Mark's so I don't know if anybody else um, I know Ian you've got something to share haven't you that you felt God When we were just worshipping then, um, a song about, you know, strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. And the Lord started talking to me about eagles. And when the eagle starts to soar on the wind, and the Lord just was speaking to me about that, you know, he calls us to soar with him. And sometimes we get afraid because, oh, wow, it's high, you know. It, it, you know, But God calls us to soar with him. And what, what does that mean in normal day life? You know, sometimes when the Lord just prompts us to speak to someone or, to, you know, when you're in conversation and, and, you know, offer to pray with someone, you know, and we were talking, you know, in this sermon there about not being afraid. And sometimes it's just stepping out and just being obedient to God. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Anybody else got something they would like to share? It may be that we just do that over coffee and tea. That's absolutely fine. Okay. Oops. Okay, we're coming to the end of the service. We go into the world to walk in God's light and to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So I've got a few bits of family news. I know, Reuben, you have a... Can you run this way? Are you able to run this way? Well, you don't have to run. You can walk if you'd like to. That's fine. We can wait. <laughs> Uh, Reuben, I know, has got a notice for us. Next week is Breakfast Church. I hope that's what my notice is. It is, it is. Um, it's really exciting. Uh, we're going to have bacon sandwiches. Uh, also, we're going to be, Bev's going to speak to us. She's going to open up the Bible in a completely new way, and it's going to be amazing. Um, it's going to be a really fun, interactive, family-friendly service uh, with food, so what's not to like? Um, do invite your friends, um, your family, strangers on the street. It's going to be really good. And we're also having a collection for the Basics Bank. Um, so if you are able to 
bring donations, please do. Um, you can go on their website and see what they're in need of. Um, so do check that out if you can. Don't just bring random stuff. I will send another email with the link on. Is there anything to, do you know the basic bank's needs, Helen? So tins of, tins of stuff and toiletries, do check the website out as well. Thank you. I was looking for Will, but I don't think he's here this morning. Um, the CAP course that I know Will um, did a notice about um, is starting on the 11th of October, um, here at 7.30. Um, there are leaflets in the front, I believe. Um, so if you want to pick up a leaflet, there are people that you think actually that would be a really helpful thing to pass on. So this is about managing money, how to budget. Um, it's, it's confidential. I know we've done it at St. James and it's a really valuable thing. Um, lots of people have found it really, really helpful. So um, it could be for you, but you could think of someone else that you know that actually is gonna be struggling. A lot of us will be struggling with our finances. Um, with the energy prices and everything else. So if you know someone who wants to pick up a leaflet, um, please do that um, and pass that on. And then just finally, a reminder that um, regular giving can be continued through contactless card machine or via the website. And that is me done, I think. Um, enjoy spending time with each other. Have coffee, have tea, pray together, talk together. <laughs>